I'm going to be adding some APIs to the API registry in this demo. I'm using GitHub as the source. APIs can come from uh, Git. Uh, they can be uploaded. Uh, they can come from a CI CD push or they can be pulled at a URL. I am choosing the production branch name and the path to the API, it has a name and a version. And now we are in the registry page. So what's going on first is we're going to lint and bundle, which is already done. It's a really relatively quick process. Then we're going to build the API docs and we'll see that button light up as soon as that's done. So that's done. So uh, by default, these docs are going to be protected. They're hosted at a URL, so it requires a different login. Now we uh, can take a look at the docs, go back. Now let's um, look at adjusting some settings. We'll go into uh, manage access, where we can control if our registry links are public or private. We can success, uh, set the uh, production or preview versions of the docs. Um, to either be public or protected. And we have support for different login mechanisms. We can enable mock servers. And we can also control other features like um, enabling or disabling try it. Uh, we can control the page template. Let's add another API. Uh, this time we'll add version two. So we're going to explore multiple versions of the same API. Every API in the registry is represented by a, um, uh, uh, by a version. And so multiple versions of an API have multiple rows in that API registry. And they have the same name. So in this case, we were using dinner at v1 and at v2. Uh, so we'll see that there's um, uh, the API docs will light up as soon as uh, it finishes building the docs. Now uh, we can do the same thing. This is again at a different URL. Now we're going to explore, we can see this one has a slightly different name, uh, although most of the content is the same. Now we can do the same thing. We can make these docs public, the production version of the docs. We could also make the previews public if we wanted to. And in this case, let's go ahead and set up a multi-version uh, doc. So we're gonna display V2 and V1 in the same, uh, same docs. Go back to the overview, find our API docs link. And there is a version switcher on there where we can switch back and forth between V1 and V2. We can see the title of the API changing. Let's explore making a change to the API. In this case, I'm using VS Code, and which has our Redocly VS Code extension installed. Um, changing a description, we can see a preview. I open up a preview on the right-hand side. Changing a description here, tightening up the text a bit. And I am going to uh, commit this change. So save. And now I'm going to enter a commit message. And then I'm going to open up a pull request after I push this. All right, I'm in GitHub and I'm going to open up a pull request right now, Just choosing my branch. Inspecting the change, looks right. Now I am creating the pull request.
and we see all these checks happening. This is how the Redockly app works. There are so many checks because I've connected the same uh, repository so many times, uh, or else you'd, you'd uh, only see a few checks. You'd see one uh, related to the lint, one related to the bundle, and one which is a preview of the docs. The preview of the docs happens to be hosted at a different URL. And this is a great workflow where someone can go and inspect the changes if someone else's um, proposed changes to an API and inspect them visually, see what the docs would look like uh, if this change was accepted. Here we're back in the registry. And we can see that we've got a preview branch now in there where we could access the preview docs from there directly if we wanted. Uh, every preview branch has, if you have mock servers enabled, is going to have a mock server as well. And we can see, uh, we can drill into the, the build logs. Here we can see that the API style guide didn't pass. More on that in a separate video. Uh, and, and we can see uh, what the, the reasons why it didn't pass for the API style guide down below.